Today I'm doing a beginner's guide to grilling chicken thighs, which is one of my favorite meats and it's real easy to do. Hi, I'm Ryan from the Grill Top Experience helping you cook with fire like a pro. And one of those things is starting with easy replicatable recipes and chicken thighs is where it's at. I always tell people to start with chicken thighs because it teaches you all the right lessons and how to manage your fire, but it's really forgiving and so it's hard to mess up so you can still enjoy dinner as you're learning through the process. And I'm gonna show you two different recipes. One of them is if you have a lot of time and preparation and being able to get that perfect flavor all the way through the chicken. And the other one is if you're short on time and gotta get dinner out right now, and that's gonna be on the gas grill. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting with the gas grill because most people have one. It's the most common grill in America, and it's pretty easy to use because you can manage the fire with just the turn of a button. For this one, we're gonna set up for indirect. I've got a three burner, so that means I'm gonna put all the meat in the middle, higher heat on the outside with lower heat in the middle, and that's gonna help avoid some of those flare ups. Most chicken thighs that you purchase need to be trimmed. This one has a bunch of extra skin that you don't wanna leave on there. The other thing to remove is any big chunks of fat that won't render well. You wouldn't want this for your first bite, so we're gonna go ahead and remove it. Do the same thing for the other thighs as well. I sent Mrs. GTE to get some Killer Hogs barbecue rub and she came back with Chickalicka Bam Bam. We both really liked it, but you can use whatever your favorite rub is. The biggest benefit of this method is it's really easy to switch things up to change the flavor profile to the one that you want. This rub doesn't have much salt, so I added just a bit directly on the skin. Chicken thighs stick to these grates like bare skin on vinyl seats in the summer. So I coat them with a thin layer of oil right before I put the meat on and it usually keeps things from sticking. Putting the meat over the low burner should avoid flare ups, but having the other burners turned up higher will keep the temperatures up to crisp up the skin. A dome temperature of around 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 205 degrees Celsius is about right. After a few minutes of cooking, give them a turn just to make sure that they're not sticking. So the one thing that everybody needs when they're cooking chicken is a good instant read thermometer. And I'm gonna to link to the one that I like to use down in the description below in case you're looking for one. They're pretty inexpensive. You need a decent one on Amazon for 20 to $30. The reason why it's so important is because you wanna to get to 175 degrees Fahrenheit to make sure that it's safe to eat and it's about the perfect tenderness when it reaches that temperature. You can get an idea of how the temperature is going based on the way the skin looks, but it's not a perfect tell. The instant read is the safest and best way. I know it's tempting to just check one and consider them all done, but you need to check each piece of meat. They're different sizes and are gonna cook at different rates. Remember, you aren't checking the skin temperature. Get that probe into the center of the meat, but away from any bones for an accurate read. Chicken thighs are pretty forgiving and it'll be okay if you go over just a little bit. I also like to turn up the heat and put the chicken skin side down to help render the last bit of fat from the skin and get it extra crispy. Just watch things carefully just to make sure that you don't get a flare up and ruin your work. These came out great with bite through skin and were a big hit around the house. If I have the time, I'll always go to my kettle and use charcoal and real wood to be able to maximize the flavor, but it's a bit of an investment. It takes a little longer to get the kettle up to steam and ready to cook and get good smoke. But I also have some chicken marinating inside. I'll quickly show you how I set that up before we talk about setting up the kettle. This chicken needed to be trimmed as well, and it really depends on the job that the butcher did. This batch had more trimming than I'm used to, and sometimes you'll barely need to trim your chicken at all. Marinating your chicken enhances the flavor and can help tenderize the meat. And I've shown a few different ways of doing that on this channel that included yogurt or the show you chicken that I'm making here. People have asked if you can use another brand of soy sauce or if it has to be Aloha show you. I've tried them. The other brands are not nearly as good for this recipe. This recipe is also pretty common in Hawaiian plate lunch and you almost always see it at Hawaiian backyard barbecues. The trick here is to not skimp out on the marinade time plan on eight hours or as long as overnight for best results. However, if using boneless, skinless thighs, you can get away with a couple of hours and a link to that video in the description below. Setting up the kettle is easy, but takes a little bit of preparation and practice to get it right. To hit the right temperatures, I toss three quarters of a chimney of lit charcoal on one side of the kettle to give me a hot and a warm zone for cooking. The vent settings are usually closed by about half on the top and the bottom. Put the chicken on the cooler side of the grill and you won't have any flare-ups because it's not over the fire. 
you still get the benefits of the convection heat and the smoke coming off the charcoal without the risk. A common question that I get when I tell people what I've cooked is, did you smoke it? And smoking generally means cooking at 225 degrees Fahrenheit for an extended period of time, and that is bad news for chicken. You'll almost always end up with a gummy skin that'll come right off the chicken thighs. But if you cook a little bit higher, but still over charcoal and wood, you can get that same smoke flavor into the meat and get the crispy skin that everybody craves. After about an hour, and once the chicken thighs are almost up to temperature, and remember we're shooting for 175 degrees Fahrenheit, I put them directly over the fire to get a bit of char to help render that skin. Your luck can change very quickly though, and you're going to watch everything very closely to make sure it doesn't burn. Even though the fire is burned down, watch how quickly the skin burns on this one chicken thigh. Well, the grill grates had a chance to heat up and that burned the skin rather than crisping it. So try to find a spot over the charcoal that is a bit cooler and you're going to get great results. I put them back on the indirect side and then I took them off when they each reached 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And just like that, you've learned how to make chicken thighs a couple of different ways. If you want more tips, consider subscribing. These are really good.